Hello everyone and welcome to the live stream. I hope that you are all doing good. I am going to be live streaming the NVIDIA event. It says the ultimate countdown, 21 days, 21 years before we enter the future. Join us to celebrate the biggest breakthroughs in PC gaming since 1999 and what comes next. So we are supposed to get the announcement on the RTX 30 series which of course is based on the Ampere architecture as opposed to the uh, GeForce RTX 20s, which are based on the Turing architecture. And they're claiming that this is going to be a huge jump in performance. Obviously, they really wanted to make a big deal out of this because this is their 21st anniversary since they released their uh, first chip, which obviously congratulations to NVIDIA. It's always great for companies to put out new technology and to announce it. I really do like how a lot of companies right now are doing kind of their own mini events to show off their new products just because of COVID-19. We didn't really know how it was going to work, what companies were going to do with things like E3 being delayed and, you know, all of the bigger gaming events. But it's good to see these companies kind of be able to um, announce their own products whenever they want. It's, it's nice to not have everything announced all on the same day, which which happens with a lot of larger games when we have large events like E3. So I'm Pretty excited to see what is coming next. I'm not going to complain over them announcing new technology. So AMD obviously has the Xbox and the PlayStation market because all of the next generation consoles are using AMD's Big Navi RDNA 2s. But as far as GPUs go in the PC market, Nvidia's got it pretty damn locked. They've got 80% of the market. So this is their shot to really impress us. And obviously as a PC gamer and just a gamer in general that focuses on consoles and the technology that's going into consoles and also into uh, my big boy PC, I'm very excited for this event to see what else they have to announce and what else we are going to see today. So that is the plan. We're going to stream the event. I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna, what they're gonna have for this event besides obviously the big the big 30s announcements just because uh they've i don't know how long this is going to be but of course they're saying they're showing the biggest breakthroughs so they're kind of uh hinting that it's going to be more than just the 30 series but um hopefully it's good i know a lot of people are very excited for this um and because it is their 21st anniversary since they released their first chip which was the g4 uh, GeForce, sorry, G4, GeForce 256. Uh, they're pretty excited about this event. They've been uh, hyping this event up for like a month now, actually. I was going back through their social media. I was looking for like one of their generic logos to use for the live stream thumbnail. And I didn't realize this. I've seen a couple of their, a couple of their posts, but I hadn't seen that they've been posting everyday memories since they really first started since their first their first card, the 256 card. So it's cool to uh, see a company hype up their product. It's hopefully going to be a, a good event. They don't have any background music or anything playing right now, which is why I'm just kind of playing the generic synth wave, which I usually play during my streams. But I guess we'll have to see what this event is all about and what they will have to show us. They uh, unfortunately, we have seen a lot of leaks online over the past, whew, I don't know, the past, hmm, I want to say like three weeks, really. We've seen a lot of leaks. Um, we saw some supposedly leaked pictures, which I, a lot of people don't really believe are real. I don't really believe that they're real, um, but apparently we've seen the specs already, but, you know, let's just hope that um, we aren't about to get hit with $1,500 30 series, which unfortunately I think that we're all kind of prepared for and expecting, but it would be nice to, to not have such expensive technology, but it's good technology. So on one side, it's like, do we really want to spend that much? No, but do we want something new in the market? Yeah. Um, but welcome everyone that is just getting here. I hope that you all are doing good. It is almost time for the NVIDIA Ultimate Countdown event. Almost. Five minutes away. Well, three minutes away, actually. That's what I get for not looking specifically at the Ultimate Countdown, literal countdown. 
21 days, 21 years. Ooh, I'm a PC gamer, as most of you know. Uh, I do most of my gaming on PC. I do uh, own consoles. I buy the new consoles when they release. I own the old consoles. I do also console game, but PC is really where it's at for me. Um, most will need to upgrade their PSU or at least buy a 12 pin adapter. So we did hear about the 12 pin adapter and from at least the leaks that we heard, uh, supposedly retailers are supposed to bundle in the adapters or Nvidia's bundling in the adapters, something like that. If that's even true, who really knows if it's true? Um, but that's at least what we heard is that, yes, you are going to need a 12 pin adapter, but, uh, there's, su there's supposed to be some sort of bundle, whether that's from NVIDIA or, um, like retailers themselves. PC is the future. PC is the future. Yes. PC is the future. <laughs> Um, still have a creative GeForce 256 lying around here. Good times. Ooh, nice. Uh, hello, Vera. How have you been? I am doing good. Excited to see what they have to announce today, what they have to show us. They better bring it big. That's all I have to say. Whew. I am currently watching their official Twitch feed, and they have 141,000 people in here. Um, obviously, there are people in streams, like, of course, mine. So there's also a lot of other uh, larger streamers showing off the event. So it will be interesting to see how many viewers they total. Um, so I'm kind of surprised, but a lot of people uh, that I expected to stream this event aren't. Kind of kind of surprising, just a, just a little bit. Um, if NVIDIA wants to succeed with their 12-pin strategy, they need to supply the adapters with their graphics cards. Yeah, in the supposed leaks that we heard, there was something about either they were going to supply the adapters or retailers were going to bundle in the adapters, which didn't make a lot of sense. So I guess we'll have to see who is going to be uh, giving us the adapters. But yeah, if they want it to succeed, especially if the $1,400 price tags are true for the 3090s, they are going to have to give us the adapters. I mean... I'm not looking to spend $1,400 on a card and then <laughs> have to buy an adapter. Even if the adapter is only $20 or $30, it's still like, I'm paying like a huge amount of money for this item. Can you just give me what I need? Uh, they still don't have any audio going on their official stream, which is interesting. Yeah, there's nothing. It's, it's silent, so... Usually for events like this, they put up some sort of pre-music. NVIDIA, you better be ready in 28 seconds. <laughs> Everyone in the Twitch chat is like $1,400. Ugh. That, that hurts a little bit to think about. $1,400. That, that hurts just a little bit. But I am very excited about this. Uh... But yeah, word is that the 3090 will need the adapter, but we're not sure yet if the others will need it. Okay, I think they're going. Wow, beautiful screen. Still no music. It's live. Okay. All right. Hopefully you guys will be able to hear this. I'm gonna turn it up a ton though. It's turned up a ton, so you all will have to let me know if you can hear it and how the volume uh, is. Okay, here we go. Whew. Crisis, Bioshock, Portal, we saw WoW, Fallout 3, Borderlands, League of Legends, Black Ops, Starcraft 2. Great games. I'm gonna turn this down a tiny bit. I think it's loud. Witcher 3, Rocket League, Batman Arkham Knight, Rise of the Tomb Raider, PUBG, Battlefield 5. All of these, m most of these, okay, good games. <laughs> most. Fortnite, Minecraft, Wolfenstein, Youngblood, Modern Warfare, Control, Cyberpunk. Ooh. And now... For the next Welcome gen. Welcome to my kitchen. 
Wow. I hope all of you are staying safe. We're going to talk about an amazing <laughs> GPU today. Modern you GPUs better. are technology marvels. It is the engine of large industries from design, cloud AI, to scientific computing. Okay. But it is the gamers and their insatiable demand that is the driving force of the GPU. All Only right. The GPUs to create the largest distributed computer ever. A million gamers united to counterstrike the COVID-19 coronavirus. The yes. result was 2.8 exaflops. Five times the processing power of the world's largest supercomputer to simulate the virus. Mm. Only at home was able to simulate 100 milliseconds, a tenth of a second in the life of the coronavirus, and capture the moment it opens its mouth to infect a human cell. Scientists believe this is also its moment of weakness. Thank okay. you all for joining this historic fight. We're going to talk about computer graphics Ooh. and the work we're doing to push the boundaries. We love computer right. graphics and have advanced it incredibly in the time of NVIDIA. As the technology it's advanced, true. the expressiveness of the medium has made graphics an invaluable tool to help us understand our world, create and explore new worlds, tell stories that inspire us. Volume's a bit low. From all right, I'll turn it up. To industry, to the arts. Computer graphics has made a profound right, impact on the world. And for that, we are privileged to have contributed. How's that? We're going to talk about gaming and the infinite ways that gaming is expanding. GeForce PC gaming is large and thriving. Look at those it's PC open and gaming numbers. Technology combined with the amazing creativity of the community oh. makes magic. Anyone could be a broadcaster now. Add yeah. a GeForce and you have a personal broadcast station. Pros stream their practices. Experts stream tips and tricks. Friends stream to friends just to hang out. There are over 20 million streamers. Games That's have a become lot of a people. new art medium. In Minecraft, gamers can build their work of art. Machinima artists create cinematics made from game assets. Tens of millions are using games to express their creativity. Yeah, definitely. Inside a computer simulation, any sport can become eSport. Virtual NASCAR and True. F1 are already attracting top racers. Like sports, eSports captures the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat and the human drama of athletic competition. Esports is on its way to be the biggest sport. I have something special for all the GeForce gamers around the world. Four gifts. Gifts? I hope you like them, and you'll find new ways to game. Okay. First, big news. Fortnite is turning RTX on. Now Minecraft and Fortnite, the number one and number two <laughs> most played games in the world, okay. <laughs> have RTX on. Yeah. Fortnite will get ray trace shadows, reflections, but ambient occlusion, and DLSS 2. These <laughs> effects look fantastic with the art style well, of Fortnite. Well, I care about the Minecraft one. I can't one. wait to see a Fortnite see concert it. with RTX on. But Fortnite? The last one with Travis Scott was watched by 28 million people. Epic made a trailer for you. Jeez. Let's play it now. Let's go! All right. I mean, I don't play Fortnite, so I don't particularly care, but I do know that there's a huge amount of people that play Fortnite and that care about Fortnite, so good for them. I'm glad that they're getting some sort of updates to their content, but for me, this is yawn. That's it? That's literally all they showed? Gamers play esports. Poor Fortnite esports fans. Esports is a game of milliseconds. Reaction time is a combination of the gamer and the machine. Let me explain. This is Valorant. In this example, the opponent is traveling at 1500 pixels per second, and it's visible in this opening for only 180 milliseconds. Okay. A typical gamer has a reaction time of 150 milliseconds from photon to action. <laughs> you can only hit this opponent if your PC adds less than 30 milliseconds. Most gamers have latencies far greater than 30 milliseconds, many up to 100 milliseconds. Today we're announcing a new esports technology called NVIDIA Reflex. NVIDIA Reflex optimizes the rendering pipeline across CPU and GPU. I just want to say while he's talking about this really quickly. In September, we're releasing poor Reflex Apple. with our game ready I mean, I mean, Over poor... 100 million so GeForce gamers will Apple, instantly become more Apple's fight with Epic Valorant, just got Fortnite, worse. Apex Legends, Call of Duty, Talked about Warzone, it a little bit, but... And Destiny 2 will be the first to integrate Reflex technology. Yikes. A little e bit for Apple for that announcement. Zero for you, we're announcing an insanely fast and beautiful display. A 360 hertz G-Sync display designed for esports. This display okay. has a built-in precision latency analyzer. Just connect your mouse. The NVIDIA 360 hertz G-Sync esports displays are arriving this fall from Acer, Alienware, Ooh. Asus, and MSI. All right. We've made a video comparing gaming on a 60 hertz, 900 hertz, and 360 hertz display. 
no confirmed price. You but. can see immediately how 360 hertz display will help you target and track an opponent. Okay, price. <laughs> For the 20 million live streamers, yeah, I'm not saying really Apple quirky. wasn't in the right. And video broadcast turns any room into a broadcast studio. <sighs> okay. Video broadcast runs AI algorithms trained by deep learning on NVIDIA's DGX supercomputer, one of the most powerful in the world. As a streamer, like I don't care about virtual background effects new whether graphics streamer or video. setups. And webcam auto is a virtual camera person tracking you. These AI effects are amazing. Available I mean, for download neat. in September and runs on any RTX GPU. All right. September any RTX will now show you right. Nvidia broadcast. Hey everybody, I'm Brandon and I'm very excited today Brandon, to talk to you about Nvidia broadcast. 360 app. uh like Hertz you, is yawn. Well, I'm Nvidia I'm looking for another main monitor. Night, and so I have a very basic webcam They can offer me setup. something good. I'm Nvidia interested. Nvidia broadcast makes these things supercharged with a lot of new awesome features that really bring it out using the power of AI and RTX GPUs. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is noise removal. So I've asked okay. my girlfriend to join me with a blow dryer here. And that distracting sound makes it very hard to understand what I'm saying. But when I turn on noise removal, oh right, we've seen the beta for this. Completely gone, and that, that that blow dryer is still going. I like that. But I Nvidia think that that is really good. Awesome audio features. There's some really if you exciting care video features about. As well. Let's take a look. First up, we have that. the ability to blur your background, which you may notice about that I need because I have a very cluttered and messy room. Muting. But when I turn this background blur background feature on. Noise. All of a sudden, I get this really classy effect. It, they're the making it look very easy, from low to high, and which is why I think it looks or, interesting. If I want, I can actually replace the background altogether. Oh, shit, I want, I want, I want the Earth. Now I'm in a space station with the magic of AI. <laughs> is that easy? Right. Or, well, we are in September gameplay, now, but I think they mean later and jump in into September. Valorant. <laughs> and now I'm playing with a green screen effect without actually having to have one at home. I don't have to play good, but at least I can look good. I mean, all right. Now, sometimes when I'm video conferencing or doing a just chatting stream, I want to zoom in to get a more personal connection with the audience. I love how the all of the people so that much. don't understand streaming and chat are like, oh my gosh, with this is revolutionary. Feature, this is great. And I'm just kind of like. It's like having your own personal cameraman that follows you wherever you go. <laughs> playing with microphone settings. So if, for example, I wanted to reach over and I grab mean, my cool I mean, it's very hat, easy. So that is nice and show it to everybody, it follows me every step of the way. I just find NVIDIA broadcast to be really exciting as both a streamer and as someone who works from home. The ability okay. to remove distracting noise, improve your background, and keep yourself in the center of the frame yeah. are all awesome features in one app, and I just can't wait for you guys to try it. All right. A new form of art has emerged from gaming called machinima. Artists Ooh, are machinima. using game assets to create cinematics. There's been tens of billions of views on YouTube. Most are shorts. Some are even recreating entire classic movies. Yeah. It's becoming a whole new art genre. It is Today, really interesting. I'm going to show you an app that will make these cinematics amazing. It's called NVIDIA Omniverse Machinima. Omniverse Machinima. It's an Machinima. app built on our Omniverse 3D workflow okay. collaboration platform. Omniverse is a universal design tool asset exchange with a viewer based on photorealistic path tracing. The engine is designed to be physically accurate, simulating light, Ooh physics, material, and artificial intelligence. Okay. We have connectors for most third-party design tools, like 3ds Max, Maya, Photoshop, Epic Unreal, Rhino, and many more. The Machinima app brings in elements and assets from games and third-party collections like TurboSquid and lets you mix and compose them into a cinematic. Creators can use their webcam to drive our AI-based post estimator to animate characters. Oh, hell yeah. Drive that face animation great. AI with your voice add high fidelity physics like particles and fluids, make materials physically accurate, and then when done with your I've never used mission, Machinima, so render film quality there's not much I can say RTX about this. GPU. NVIDIA Omniverse but Machinima. If you use Beta it, in October. it Sign definitely up at looks NVIDIA. useful. Com slash Machinima. Yeah, Let definitely looks good. Let me show you a demo good. we created in a few days. We started with in assets a few from days. Mountain Blade 2, Banner Lord. You're gonna love this. In a few days by professionals, can we add? All right, show me what you've got. This looks like a Ubisoft cinematic. Game companies are gonna have to step it up with their with their trailers. I um, I didn't expect software announcements, but I guess Nvidia wants more wants to be more than just like a, a hardware company. Um, 
it seems like with these announcements, they're really trying to control streaming. I mean, they've got a lot in store for streamers. Um, definitely, definitely a lot in store. And also, creators as well, apparently. Mountain Blade for 2, Banner Lord. For 40 years since NVIDIA researcher Turner Witted first published his paper on ray tracing, computer science researchers have chased I didn't think that looked bad, I mean. I didn't think that looked bad, I mean. With real time ray tracing. It wasn't Nvidia, groundbreaking. The ultimate limits of rasterization approach, but he did say it was in just a few days. Over so. the past 10 years to realize real time ray tracing on a large scale. At I wasn't expecting ago, we announced these the announcements, NVIDIA though, RTX. for this event. Now, <laughs> okay, later, show us. It is Come clear on. we have reinvented computer graphics. Reinvented NVIDIA computer RTX graphics. is a full stack invention. Okay. RTX starts with a brand new GPU architecture, but it is so much more. It includes new engine tech and a bunch of new rendering algorithms. RTX is a home run. All major 3D it's APIs have been run. extended for RTX. RTX is supported by all major 3D tools. RTX tech is incorporated into all major game engines. There are hundreds of games in development and thousands of research papers of new rendering and AI algorithms enabled by RTX. The RTX GPU has okay. three fundamental processors. The programmable shader that we first introduced over 15 years ago. Yep. RT core to accelerate the ray triangle and ray bounding box intersections. Mm-hmm. And ray AI tracing processing and pipeline AI. called Tensor Core. Tensor Core accelerates linear algebra that is used for deep neural network processing, the foundation of modern AI. <laughs> AI is the most powerful technology force of our time. Ooh. Computers that learn from data and write software that up. no humans can. The advances are nothing short of breathtaking. NVIDIA is doing groundbreaking work in this area. You might have seen our work in self-driving cars and robotics. Computer graphics and gaming <laughs> will robots. also be revolutionized by deep learning. Let me show you some recent works and the art laughing. of the possible. The first video is a generative adversarial network that has learned to synthesize virtual characters of any artistic genre, including photorealistic. Second is a neural okay. network that animates a 3D face directly from voice. You require more Vespine gas. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. The AI character can speak in any language, <laughs> be any gender, I'm not and laughing. even rap and sing. Third is a character locomotion of infinite number of positions. Imagine negotiating arbitrary paths and obstacles. The fourth is reconstructing 3D from video. Imagine the possibilities. Record video, interact in 3D. This one is a deep learning model that learned the physics behavior of cloth animation. It looks pretty good. I feel like so many games Finally, don't this deep nail learning cloth. Model of ray tracing can predict colors of missing pixels so that fewer rays need to be cast and fewer pixels need to be fully rendered. We can achieve orders of magnitude speed ups. Okay. AI is certain to play a giant role in the future of computer graphics and gaming. The powerful tensor cores and RTX GPUs will let us do AI in real time. One Sounds of the first major spooky. AI computer graphics breakthroughs Magic is AI. DLSS. Here's the challenge. Real-time ray tracing is far more beautiful but requires a lot more computation per pixel than rasterization. So the solution is to ray trace fewer pixels okay. and use AI on tensor cores to up res, to super res, to a higher resolution and boost frame rate. DLSS took nearly two years we of We want NPC research. AI? We built a supercomputer <laughs> to train the network. The DLSS model is trained on extremely high quality, 16K, offline rendered images of many kinds of content. Okay. Once trained, the model is downloaded into your driver. At runtime, DLSS 2.0 takes in low resolution, alias image and motion vector of the current frame, and the high resolution previous frame to generate a high resolution current frame. I think DLSS is one of our biggest breakthroughs in the last 10 years. Okay, I want to see more of it. Take a look at these it. images of Death Stranding, the latest game by Kojima-san. I mean, it does DLSS look better. Is sharper than native 4K and created detail yeah. from AI that native rendering didn't even show. And the frame rate is higher. A frame rate higher. What does DLSS that mean exactly? They the frame rate is higher. Native rendering and runs even faster. Like, what type of frame rate? You can play at 4K rate? without a performance hit. Tensor Core effectively gives RTX a 2x performance boost. Let's look at one frame trace of a game oh, to see the processors that's of RTX. That's a claim. Match. Okay. Adding ray tracing to games dramatically increases the computation workload. Using shaders to do ray traversal and object intersection reduces the frame rate. We added the RT core, which reduces shader workload by 
RT core offloads the shaders by doing the ray triangle and ray bounding box intersection calculations. Hmm. Using the same methodology as Microsoft Xbox, the RT core is effectively a 34 teraflop shader, and Turing has an equivalent of 45 teraflops while ray tracing. Even right. with RT core, the amount of time consumed is significant. So RT core well, yeah. and shaders have to run concurrently. Okay. Even then, 20 milliseconds is only 50 frames per second, and still a step back in performance relative to previous generations. This is where the Tensor Core and DLSS come in. Jeez. Rendering to a lower resolution, then using AI and super fast Tensor Core to effectively double frame rate. Now you can get ray tracing, get high resolution, and high frame rate at the same time. That's the magic of the three processors of RTX. Vera's background is really a green screen. RTX oh yeah, GPU, I'm using the new uh, the new NVIDIA programmable shading and AI. The new NVIDIA software everyone. had a ton of processing power. 110 percent shader teraflops. <laughs> 34 RT teraflops and 89 tensor teraflops. Let me show you our new RTX GPU. Ampere is a giant leap in performance. Please. Ampere does two shader yes. calculations per clock versus one on Turing. 30 shader Second teraflops generation compared RTX. to 11. Ampere doubles ray triangle intersection throughput. Ampere's RT core delivers 58 RT teraflops <laughs> compared to Turing's 34. And Ampere's new Jeez. tensor core automatically identifies and 58 removes 58 compared to 34. Weights. And the new tensor core hardware processes the sparse network at twice the rate of Turing. Jeez. 238 okay. tensor flops compared to 89. Ladies and gentlemen, 238 compared to 89. Our second generation RTX. 28 billion transistors built on Samsung 8N NVIDIA custom process. Hmm. All three processors double rates over Turing, a triple double. It connects okay. to Micron's new G6X, the fastest memories ever made. The world's The days of just relying on transistor mem. performance scaling is over. Yet Ampere is an incredible two times the performance and energy Jeez. efficiency of Turing. At NVIDIA, we use every engineering lever to squeeze every drop of performance the out of the system. The charts just make it look From so, so OP. From architecture, custom process design, circuit design, logic design, packaging, custom yeah, series rumors I.O., were three memory, to power four and thermal times design, PCB design, software RT and performance. thousands of engineers it's still good. per generation, billions of dollars. Just Full not what some of the rumors said. Full stack extreme craftsmanship is the hallmark of our GPUs. Our performance energy efficiency and low power okay. are all world class and real application performance highlights ampere's new rt core the more ray tracing is done the greater the ampere speed up Damn. ampere rt core doubles ray intersection processing its ray tracing is processed concurrently with shading and ampere can render cinematic images with motion blur eight times faster than turing let's take a look at ampere in action all at right our kitchen gtc a few months ago we showed Marbles, the world's first fully patched photorealistic real-time graphics. My favorite game. It was running on our highest-end Turing Quadro RTX 8000. Turing was doing 720p, 25 frames per second. Okay. Today, we're going to run an enhanced version of Marbles with even more special effects. And enhanced it is running at marbles, 1440p, boys. 30 this frames is it. per second. Over four times the performance. I'm Ladies sorry, and it's funny. Enjoy marbles Jeez. at night. All right. <laughs> We're just making mild fun of it. 30 FPS. Sixteen times the detail. Sounds sounds intense. <laughs> Look at this. This looks pretty good. I'll admit. <laughs> that does look really good. Plot twist, it's real marbles. Hmm. 
Yeah, what they say it should do doesn't always equal the real performance. Marbles is entirely path traced. Are most no games gonna look like time. this? Not necessarily, but this does there look good. There are hundreds of area lights, including spherical area lights. No yeah, the 16 might only be dynamic. under uh, ideal situations. The um, depth of field is film quality pre and Pre-rendered, move the camera around in real time? Well, right. That's the thing, is we always see pre-rendered. Everything is dynamic. Diffuse GI, all dynamic. They always make it look there as pretty as they want. There are hundreds of bodies, 80 million triangles. Materials are physically accurate. Physics simulation and volumetric rendering in real time. This looks... Who knew we'd be so excited to see marbles, though? That looks great. All oh, the damn marbles. DLSS 2.0 is doing the super resolution and AI denoising. $70 marbles game incoming. Marvels at the marbles. Comment of the day. Alright. Let's compare Marvel's Turing and Marvel's Ampere. You can sure. see a dramatic visual Let's quality jump of Ampere. Marvel's on Turing runs at 720p, 25 frames per second. Marvel's on Ampere runs at 1440p, 30 frames per second. That didn't More look than like four times the a huge upgrade. And Let Ampere me see that again. Did area lights and depth of field. A giant performance leap. Can we see them Today's side by games side? Are giant no. Worlds, okay. Indoor Thanks. and out with photogrammetry, dense geometry, and lots of characters. Games are over 200 gigabytes and getting bigger. This is like 50,000 songs remind me. 400 hours of streaming video. <laughs> Games have pushed PCIO and file systems to the breaking point. Games CPUs are copy so files from massive disk and the game image. This is fine when the story system was me. slow. 50 to 100 megabytes per second. Okay. Now with Gen 4 PCI Express and solid state drives, PCs can transfer data at seven gigabytes per second, a hundred times faster. <sighs> CPU copying data to memory and decompressing Ooh. game images is now the bottleneck. Decompressing data from 100 megabytes per second hard drives takes only a few CPU cores. However, decompressing from I'm seven gigabytes per second I'm a little bit worried. I feel like my pockets PCI are getting more empty at this takes point. Takes only 20 CPU cores. I have a bad feeling. Today, we're announcing NVIDIA RTX IO with three new advances. New I.O. APIs for fast loading and streaming directly from SSD to GPU memory. GPU lossless decompression. And collaboration with Microsoft on direct storage for Windows. That streamlines oh. the transfer of data from storage to GPU memory. Okay, Microsoft direct with storage NVIDIA for RTX Windows. IO, vast worlds will load instantly. Picking up where you left off will be instant. Don't this make promises like that. Generation gaming. Let me show you Ampere in action in one of the most anticipated games of 2020. Cyberpunk? CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk. Hell this yeah! This trailer is called Scenes of Cyberpunk yes. RTX. It shows ray trace reflections, diffuse illumination, shadows, ambient occlusion, yes. and DLSS 2.0. This is what we Enjoy. want. I was hoping that they'd show Cyberpunk because it's so anticipated. All right, show me the good stuff. This is where I open my wallet. I've I've got to get my my credit card ready, guys. My Yu-Gi-Oh credit card. I mean, Cyberpunk already looks so good, though. Oh, yeah. November 19th. Ooh, that looked good. Ladies I want and more, though. Our new flagship GPU, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080. Powered 30 by Ampere. 80. Second generation RTX architecture. Okay. 3080? 3090 where? Flagship is 3080. 3090 where? Alright, there's the 256. Their first. It's 21 years old. This is their 21st anniversary of it. 690. <laughs> Res Xbox One X footage. 1080. 2080. I recently got a 2070 Super, so I'm not jumping on these, but... They're, yeah, they just said the flagship is 3080. 
second gen 28 billion transistors 1.9 times nvidia ampere architecture r6 uh, x 19 7 okay trying to read it as fast as i can third gen tensor cores 238 tensor teeth flop structural sparsity and dlss second gen rt cores you guys can't see it i just realized my face is over there let me move my face really quickly sorry guys revolutionary thermal design okay i'm not sure where to put my face let me move it, let me, let me move it down here there hasn't been much down here Push and pull fans. Compact PCB. 18 phases of power. So the image was real. We've seen this image leaked. We saw this image leaked like two, three weeks ago. We didn't know that it was real. It is real. Okay. The 3080. The ultimate the play. The RTX 3080. Ooh. I have one right here. Let me show it to you. I've got one right here that I 3D printed. Let me just give it. Let me just give it to you guys. It is beautiful. That's pretty. I mean, you never see it. The RTX 3080. The 3080. It is wonderfully crafted. It's going to look beautiful Ooh. in your PC. And it lights up. Now let me tell you and about it lights some of the other up. Way to way to like. sell it, and it lights up. <laughs> Turing used G6, the fastest memories at the time. Uh, the industry thought that was the limit. For Ampere, we had to push through that limit. Working with Micron, we designed the world's first memories with PAM4 signaling, pulse amplitude modulation, with it four voltage up. levels that encode two bits of data each. RGB where? One zero one one. Each voltage step is only two hundred fifty millivolts. So in the same period of time, G6X can transmit twice as much data as G6. Beauty isn't everything, PAM4 though. PAM4 is extreme signaling technology, and it's just becoming used in high-speed networking. Okay. The Ampere thermal architecture is the first ever flow-through design, working harmoniously with PC chassis cooling system, pulling in cool air from the outside, flowing through the GPU, and pushing hot air straight out the chassis. To allow All room right. for a fan to flow air directly through the module, our engineers architect a super dense PCB design that is 50% smaller than previous while adding the bigger Ampere GPUs, HDMI 2.1, PCI Express 4.0, and G6X. There are two independently controlled fans. The bracket it's front fan small. pulls cool air from the bottom and pushes the heated air out through the graphics Ripped card CPU. <laughs> a backside pull through fan passes cool air CPU's over the fan. CPU's cringing the everywhere. And directs the hot air to the top and back of the chassis to be exhausted by the system fan. The 3080 flow through system is three times quieter and keeps the GPU 20 degrees I want to know if there's a 3090. The they said design. this is the flow. It can cool 90 watts know. more than Turing. The generational leap is ultimately the most important factor of new GPUs. A significant technology advance is needed to inspire content developers to create the next level of content and for the install base to upgrade. 3090. Let's see how the 3080 AFK stacks right up to now. previous generation architectures on the latest graphics intensive games. 3080 is faster than 2080 Ti. 3080 up to is twice the performance of twice. 2080. Up at the to same price. twice. Let's put Ampere that there. Is the biggest generational leap we've ever had. Ladies and gentlemen, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080, our new flagship GPU. Price. Powered by Ampere. Price. Our second generation RTX again? GPU architecture. Sorry, guys. Incredible amounts of processing in okay. the shader. RT ray tracing core and tensor core for processing AI. 10 gigabytes of G6X, twice the processing power of 2080. And at the same price, starting at six ninety nine. Starting at six ninety nine. September seventeenth. One of our most popular GPUs is the seventy series, nine seventy, ten seventy, twenty seventy. Oh, hugely popular. Oh You're gonna love shit. the new RTX thirty seventy. Faster than the twenty eighty Ti, the Turing enthusiast GPU priced at twelve hundred dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, the new GeForce RTX thirty seventy. Let me show 30, it. 3070. All right. 20. What's the price going to be? 20 that looks good, terabytes. too. 
40 RT teraflops. Okay. And 160 499 maybe? Tensor Core for AI processing. Maybe With 599. Eight gigabytes of G6. RTX 3070 is faster than the $1,200 RTX 2080 Ti. Rip to the Starting users of the 2080 Ti. Available in October. <laughs> Okay, so Octo Every starting 499 available in October. While introducing new features that enhance image quality. Every okay. couple of generations, the stars align, as it did with Pascal. And we get a giant generational leap. Pascal was known as the perfect 10. Okay, Pascal so 499, 3070. It took the super family of Turing to meaningfully exceed Pascal on game performances without ray tracing. Starting With 700, 699. On, Pascal, uh, using programmable shaders to compute late triangle intersections, fell far behind Turing's RT core. And Ooh. Turing with ray tracing on Rip to guys the like same performance as Pascal you. with ray tracing oh. off. I recently got a 2070 a Super basis, and I'm happy with it. This was a but huge achievement. The images are far more beautiful. $700? shadow artifacts are gone. But gamers want it more. They want every generation to be more realistic 90? And higher frame rate at the same time. 90? So we double down on everything. Twice the shader, twice the ray tracing, and twice the tensor core. The triple double. The triple Ampere double. Knocks the daylights out of Pascal on ray tracing. And even with ray tracing on, Rip crushes AMD. Pascal on frame rate. To all my Pascal gamer friends, it is safe to upgrade now. Amazing ray tracing games are coming. Activision and developer Treyarch are launching a new Call of Duty on November 13th. We know that. It's a masterpiece and it looks incredible. There are dynamic <laughs> lights, ray tracing, shadows and ambient occlusion, okay. DLSS 2.0, and NVIDIA Reflex super low latency technology. The last Call of Duty sold an amazing 30 million copies. That's a Activision lot of copies. Activision put together this trailer of never before seen footage. Enjoy. All right, new trailer. I wish that we saw like a little bit of gameplay instead of pre-rendered trailers. Um, I just want to say that even though we're kind of making fun of, we're fun of making fun of Big Navi a little bit, we really don't know what Big Navi cards will have to show us. Um, we, we really don't. They're still, they, they could turn around and make some big announcements. I mean, the Big Navi RDNA 2 chips are AMD's answer to NVIDIA technology, which we obviously see what you know, NVIDIA tech is gonna be now for, for most of us. Uh, AMD has only shown off the console um, chips. We've, we've, only, we've only really seen, obviously, what's going to be a next generation consoles. We've only seen what's gonna be in the Xbox Series X and the PS5. Let me talk to you about one more thing. But we don't Several know what years else ago, we started building they have. The Titan, pushing the GPU to the absolute limit. 3090? To create the best graphics card of that generation. Okay. It was built in limited quantities and only through NVIDIA. The distribution was limited. The demand surprised us. We'll talk more about Creatives that after, were though. making 4K movies, rendering cinematics. Researchers built workstations for data science and AI. Bloggers built broadcast workstations. <laughs> flight and I'm getting one of these to play Stardew Valley. There is clearly a need for a giant GPU that what is available is it? all over the world. Show it. So we made a giant ampere. Ladies and gentlemen, the RTX 3090. 3090 guys show me my empty wallet did he just take it out from under his from under his stove a, beast, a ferocious <laughs> gpu a bf gpu 36 okay. Okay. shader teraflops that was good 69 rt, RT teraflops 65 it's a big boy teraflops, and it comes with a massive 24 gigabytes of g6x Fourteen ninety nine. A three slot dual axle flow through design. Ten times quieter and keeps hundred dollars more expensive than we thought. Than the Titan RTX design. But there's more. The thirty ninety is so big 8K? that for the very first time we can play games at sixty frames per second in eight K. I don't this know. A hundred dollars more than the leaks even said. Looks like on the stream. No, fifteen hundred dollars. Roll the clip. Fifteen hundred dollars, eight k. I don't know. I mean, that's so pricey, though. Whew. I mean, I've never been more excited to do anything. 
8K ray tracing. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Oh my god. Who are these streamers? No. Fake streamers, right? This is f***ing incredible, dude. This is amazing. The resolution on this is silly. My god. It's just... This is wear and tear on the treads. Look at this. <laughs> it's so it crazy. So all right, all right, all right, all right. Move fast and shoot things. This is 8K, sir. I can see everything. Oh, I this is 8K. I can see everything. Like this. Uh, this is so realistic. I feel like I'm really in battle. This is insane. <laughs> Die, I want to look at the pretty things. There we Paid go. actors? The, the ray tracing is insane. Obviously. Most of These them. The Most of them. I'm just kidding. And then it's like, I know two of them. Like that, but it does. <laughs> I'm like looking across the vistas, the grand vistas that are happening right now. Holy sh! Look at this. This feels like a Disneyland though? experience. Oh, it is so smooth. It's butter. Oh, it's smoothish, dude. I can't believe it's not butter. I mean, this is game changing. There's no other way to put it. Showing their faces and then showing like these two second clips of gameplay doesn't help us at all. It it's really been doesn't. It's 20 years since the NVIDIA GPU introduced programmable shading. The GPU revolutionized modern computer graphics. Developers jumped on and invented clever algorithms. So NVIDIA was like AMD can maybe beat out trailers, the 3080, but never a 3090. This 3090s. Ambient occlusion and reflections. A tank. Developers push the limits of rasterization beyond anyone's but, expectations. Right, they still haven't shown Meanwhile, us the beefy big knobs. NVIDIA GPU processing increased a stunning 100,000 fold. Gaming became a powerful technology driver. Gamers grew to billions. And gaming pushed into all aspects of the Is there also 3060? If the last 20 years was amazing, the next 20 will seem nothing short no. of science fiction. Today's Ampere launch is a giant step into the future. This is our greatest generational leap ever. The second generation NVIDIA RTX, fusing programmable shading, ray tracing, and artificial intelligence, gives us photorealistic graphics and the highest frame rates at the same time. Yeah, I, that's Once why I said I knew who of two of them were, because Adam Sussler was there. The and Ampere is going to bring you joy beyond gaming. NVIDIA Reflex to improve your response time. NVIDIA Broadcast turns any room into a studio, and Omniverse Machinima turns you into an animated filmmaker. We are super pleased with 3070, 3080, and 3090, the first three members of the Ampere generation. Good. You're going to feel a boost like never before. I can't wait to go forward 20 years to see what RTX started. Okay. Homes will have holodecks. We will beam ourselves through time and space, traveling at the speed of light. Sending photons, not atoms. In this future, G-Force is your holodeck, your lightspeed starship, your time machine. In this future, we will look back and My realize holodeck, that it guys. started here. Thank you for joining us today, and to all of our fans for celebrating the arrival of Ampere. Right. They didn't say a date and when the 3070 was going to be released, did they? All right, so that's it. That was the event. Of course, I'm not going to end the stream instantly. We're going to chat about it for a few minutes. So those were their announcements. Let me see if I can find a compiled list of them really quickly, just so I can read them back to you all while we discuss it. Um, NVIDIA RTX 30 series, because I want to see just dates. Um, do, do. Do, let me see if I can... F I don't know if I'm going to be able to find a compiled list yet, just because they were just announced. Um, I might be able to find it on, like, Twitter. So let me look really quickly. If any of you guys have um, a compiled link, let me know. But I, I think I'm going to have to go to Twitter. Uh, that was interesting, though. First of all, rest in pepperoni pizza to the 2080 Ti users. I feel so bad for you guys. So... We know the 3080 is the new flagship, twice the performance as the 2080, or up to twice the performance from the 2080, as they're saying. 30 shader T-flops, 58 RT T-flops, and 238 tensor T-flops, 10 gigabyte G6X, and it is starting at $699. That price is really good. Uh... $700 for their new flagship is a really, really good price. I was expecting it to be like a thousand. I was expecting for their, for the 
from judging from the leaks and also from kind of what we heard, I expected it to be a a, a, 50, a $1,400 card, a thousand, and then like a 700. So this is a 700 and this is the mid-tier one. Um, then we also have the 3070, which is faster. It just says faster than the 2080 Ti. It doesn't say how much, but as you guys saw, you saw the charts. Oh, the 20, um, the, the 3080, the 3080 is supposed to be coming out September 17th. So in like two and a half weeks, the 3080 is launching. Then we have the 3070. The 3070 is faster than the 2080 Ti, 20 shader T flops, 40 RT T flops, and 163 tensor T flops. Eight. Ada GB G6 starting at $4.99 and it's available in October. We don't know when in October, but it is releasing in October and that's going to be 500. So there's the 500, a 700, and then we have the, let me find the 3090 somewhere, um, or not. <laughs> All right, 3090, the world's first 8K gaming GPU. I don't know if I feel great about that gimmick. Like, f world's first X, Y, and Z, world's first uh, 8K. I mean, yeah. Okay, whenever you tell a gamer 4K, 8K, why don't we just go to 24K? Uh, I think people are going to be pretty, pretty excited about it. And obviously, I had said this at the beginning, though, this is definitely... Um, was a big event for them just because it was their, their like, uh, anniversary from the, from their first, uh, card. So, yeah, there was October for the 3070, two and a half weeks for the 3080, and then the 3090 is the world's first 8K gaming GPU. Um... It says RTX on with DLSS 8K, uh, 8K HDR shadow play, AV1, and uh, HDMI 2.1. They didn't say about any adapters or anything. I know that at the beginning of the stream, we were talking about how apparently they were going to need 12-pin adapters. Um, we didn't hear anything about that. At least I'm 90% sure that I didn't miss that in there. Um, everyone in chat, I don't, I didn't know that 8K existed. <laughs> uh, 8K who? And, um, the G RTX 30, let me look up, 3090 was 1499, right? Uh, yes. It is 1499. That is where they lost me with this. So, Going into this, we had heard rumors for a little while, like the past month or so, uh, just for the question in chat, there are 8K TVs. There are 8K TVs. I think that there's even... So, there definitely is 8K TVs. Um, I mean, you just... <laughs> you're not gonna be able to, uh, get them anytime soon, though, probably. Um... There's, I was looking really quickly, so there's, <laughs> if you Google this, there is a 63 foot 16K LED TV for $5 million, Sony, <laughs> it's hitting big, uh, but the 3090 is going to be $14.99, now that's where they kind of lost me. Because we, we had heard from the leaks, or the supposed leaks and rumors, that it was supposed to be, like, $13.99. And I understand, okay, if you're spending $13.99, wouldn't you want to spend $14.99 because it's only $100 more? That is expensive. That is pricey. So pricey. Um... X17 says, if we pull together $1,500 in donations, will you do a 3090 review stream? I mean, if I, if I got a $1,500 donation and someone said, buy a 3090, I would obviously buy a 3090 because if, yeah, people donated towards it, I'd buy it. But I do not plan at this point in time right now to dish out uh, $1,500 for it. I would consider now getting that 3080 closer to the amount of time than I expected. I didn't expect to want to get a 3080 for at least 
half a year probably because I did recently a couple of months ago probably four months ago now got, I got my 2070 uh, super which is I mean it's it's obviously great uh, but wow 30 their their prices are really good I don't know about that 3090 though price seems expensive I know that they're trying to market it with 8k uh, pricey 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 I do also want to say that like the big Navi RDNA 2 chips are AMD's answer to NVIDIA technology, which obviously we saw as Impure. Um, even though all we've seen are the ones in consoles that have the performance of roughly a 2080 Ti, and I know a lot of people in chat were making fun of this, they haven't shown us uh, any, any other chips. All we've seen of Big Navi is what's been developed for Sony and Microsoft, and we don't know what they're sitting on for PC architecture. They could have Big Navi GPUs that are twice as fast as these consoles because the consoles might run the base model of it, but we haven't seen any big, beefy, uh, big, beefy, big Navi. That didn't sound right. Beefy, big Navi. We don't know, though, what they have. I know a lot of people are like, F4 AMD, rest in peace. <laughs> big navi i kind of agree with that because i mean they probably expected the 3080 but that 3090 is pretty pretty intense to be honest so we we really don't know what big navi has in store for us so i don't want to like necessarily count count it out i know that we see the 3090 and how how crazy that is but 3090 is like a workstation deep learning priced card it it's 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 pricey um i don't think so for those of you in chat maybe you usually purchase um maybe you usually purchase the highest tier graphics cards maybe you do sometimes uh are you considering getting the 3090? Because for me, I wouldn't consider it with that price tag. I would get that if it was like $1,200. If that card was like $1,200, I would have been like, okay, that seems great. But $1,500, I don't know. It's just, it's pricey. Um, and I'm curious to know for those of you who are in chat right now, if you were to upgrade to the 30 series, which card would you get? Um... I feel like most people are going to say the 3080 because the 3080, I mean, $700 is a really good price for that. That is a really solid price. Um, but I feel like a lot of people are going to say the 3080s. I would say the 3080. Um, it's cheaper than I was expecting, but I want to know everyone's thoughts on that. Um, I usually hover around the 70 and 80. Fair enough. Um, nope, but might get the 3080. Yeah. Um, only a 4K screen, so, uh, 3090 is not worth the money. <laughs> uh, 12K, uh, 12K gaming monitors incoming when? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, so many, so many jokes could be made. Uh, poor 2080 Ti users, though. Yeah, I didn't buy the 2080 Ti. I got the 2070 Super, and well, like I guess I'm kind of glad that I I I didn't get the 2080 Ti. I mean, it's really good, but that I mean, even the 2080 is still very pricey. Let me look up. How much is the 2080 um, Ti? Let me let me look. I think they're still like twelve hundred dollars. I'm pretty sure they're still ultra pricey. Um, 2080 Ti, see all buying options. Uh, 2060 Super, they don't have any on their website. Okay, uh, RTX 2080 Ti, 1279. It is still almost $1,300. Still almost $1,300. Um, ugh. pricey, pricey, pricey. Their event was good. Um, I see someone asking in chat. The event, I felt, went pretty good for them. I mean, I loved how he pulled the, <laughs> the 3090, like, out from his oven. He basically reached, like, in front of his oven, but it looked like it was in his oven. 
um, <laughs> can sustain big heat. <laughs> oh, there's gonna be a meme of that for sure. Him reaching behind him, grabbing it, and then pulling it out, and it's gonna be like, and then you're gonna, then you're gonna edit in pictures of what he's holding. We, we know that that's going to happen. Um, Big Navi. I, I see someone asking again in chat. We don't know what Big Navi is going to look like for the PCs yet, because the only thing running Big Navi at the moment is the next generation consoles, the uh, Series X and the PS5. I keep wanting to say the Series S, but it's the Series X. Why they name everything so similarly, I'm not sure. As far as we know from the specs we've seen for the consoles, they run at about an equivalent to the RTX 2080 Ti, which um, we see these cards are are now better than, which is fast. It, it's fast, but whatever they're going to release for the PC for Big Navi is bound to be much faster than what's in the consoles. So what we see for Big Navi in the consoles could just be, like I said before, like their base type of chip. Maybe they just haven't shown us the, um, as I messed up before, the big beefy, <laughs> big Navis for the PC, but we don't know. I mean, they have a lot of competition now, that's for sure. Um, it seems like they're, which I wasn't expecting here, they're really pushing software stuff as another way to compete against AMD, which I was expecting a little bit of that, but we got a lot more than I expected. And they're also trying to, uh, like capture the streaming market. They spent a bit of time talking about the APIs, but they, they really put an emphasis on streaming, which I thought was interesting. Um... I guess because there are so many, um, like, medium-sized streamers out there or people who want to start streaming or want to be able to casually get into video and content creation, I think that's also another way, a very strategic way for them to sell their products. I mean, obviously, a lot of what they do or a lot of what they show, you sh most streamers can already do, like, you can already mess around with microphone settings and fix how you want it to sound and you can edit and you can edit the background so it could be blurry and you could get a green screen if you wanted and I think that that is a very smart way though for them to sell more of their products I think that it is interesting and I want to see what else they have to do with that I mean I wasn't I wasn't that wowed by it just because I already have a lot of the equipment. I already can do basically everything that they said. But the voice RTX is very interesting. That is something that that's kind of been in like a closed bait over the past couple months. That is what really interested me. The part where he brought out the hair dryer. That is one thing that really interested me. But they did put a lot of emphasis on software stuff. They, they did push the software stuff a lot. And uh, I think that that was a bit of a surprising event, honestly. I think that we, we did see kind of announcements that we expected. We expected there to be three tiers of cards. We expected them to be expensive, most of them. I wasn't expecting the 30, uh, the 3080 to be so well priced. I expected that to be 900 to a thousand dollars, seven or 699. Pff, solid, solid price. Um, I see you guys talking about VR in chat. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not huge into VR. Um. Uh, Marcus says, due to the new, due to, uh, the new texture, shader requirements now already and in the future, 10, uh, GB is not much. That's true. Uh, someone said, to be honest, if you get these video cards, you could, would do better doing real-time 3D modeling in something like Cinema 4D and Blender. Um. But you'd not, oh, chat's moving, chat's moving fast. Um, but you'd not have an audience as no one can yet see above 4K. <laughs> I thought that the modeling stuff was interesting. Um, I'm not a game designer or anything, but I, I thought that it looked good. I mean, if anyone in chat is interested in that type of stuff, please let me know what you uh, thought about it. What was it called? Omni something? What was it called? NVIDIA Omni... Omniverse... Omniverse? <laughs> Question mark. I think it was Omniverse. Uh, yeah, Omniverse. Machinima. That is its full name. That is its full name. 
Whew, everyone though, those, those sweet, sweet 3090s though. Let me just bring this up on screen real quick for all of you. Whew, look at this. That's it. That's it. 8K, I love how they put 8K next to it. That's the 30, 3090 right there. Uh, I think the 3080 was, nope, that's a 3090 picture as well. So we'll leave up the 3090 picture uh, as we come to the end of the stream. But I thought that that was a pretty good, a pretty good event. Uh, I, I said it at the beginning, I do like that a lot of companies right now are doing their own events. They're showing off products. Um, it's nice to not get like Twitter announcements for things. I do like when they do live streams so people can give their first impressions and kind of, I like to be able to react with you guys and show off these events. I do, I do like it. It sucks that COVID's a thing and this is the only reason why they're doing it or else everything would be at like a large event like an E3, but I thought it was cool. Um, I, yeah, I don't know how much the 20 series will drop to. I think that the 20 series is definitely going to have to start dropping in price. That's for sure. Um, especially with the 2080 being a, a very good price, but I guess we, we will not see, uh, for a little while next couple weeks, the 2080 is coming out and then the 2070, 30, sorry. The 3080 is coming out in a couple of weeks, like two and a half weeks on the 17th, and then the 3070 uh, is coming out in October. So we'll see kind of then um, what the 20 series prices will drop to. Don't buy anything right now. If you if you wanna if you want a card, just 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 hold, hold for a little while. We we will obviously have to see the prices drop though. Uh, when I hear Omniverse, I think of Ben 10 for some reason. VGF. I mean, kind of true. <laughs> kind of true. Um, on a serious note for potential 3090 buyers, did you see how he nearly broke his back lifting that monster? Have fun. <laughs> have fun preventing it from sagging or tearing. I, I, yeah, I mean, they're the 3090's big. I, it's not. I was gonna make a joke. It it's it's big. I mean, the thirty seventy compared to the thirty ninety. The thirty seventy was pretty compact. Uh, the thirty ninety though, whew, big boy. The thirty eighty looked like a good size though. I mean, it's it's hard to see, but that thing's thick and <laughs> it's thick and it's big. Um, I bet that thirty ninety crowds the shit out of a PC's interior. Probably occupies all a PCIe slots and uh, bullies out the RAM DIMM slots. Yeah, I mean, it's big. So I would like to see a size comparison from like the thirty ninety compared to like the the twenty eighty Ti. I think that that's going to be a picture that we're really gonna have to see soon. Um, but it's it's big. It's not a small little thing. But, all right, you guys, I am going to end the NVIDIA GeForce special event 30 series announcement stream here. Thank you all for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Uh, tonight, day of this stream, I will be doing a discussion stream live, a chill and chat stream at 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll talk about this a little bit more because I'm sure that there will be people who will uh, come in and ask about the event, and even though I'll reference them to this stream, I will talk about uh, the 30 series a little bit more later as well, so thank you all for stopping by. I do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the stream, please make sure to give it a like, and of course, if you do, do did not, I was gonna say do not, then I realized that's not the right tense, did not enjoy it, please make sure to give it a dislike, and uh, thank you guys for being here. I will see you all during tonight's live stream, but the 30 series is here and have a fantastic day everyone.